This morning, it's my humble honor to welcome to Shepherd's Grove in the hour of power, Mr. Pat Boone. Many here today have seen this movie star in April Love, Journey to the Center of the Earth. He's won two golden albums, uh, platinum record, etc. And most important, he's a follower of Jesus and, of course, probably needs no introduction. Mr. Boone grew up in Nashville and graduated magna cum laude from Columbia University. He wanted to teach high school, but God had other plans for his life. Yeah. His singing uh, debut on the national stage began on the original Ted Mack Amateur Hour, and he and his wife Shirley are celebrating their 60th wedding anniversary this November. <laughs> Pat, I also understand it's uh, your birthday. What's happening? That was a surprise. Yeah, I started throwing a curveball. I haven't been anxious to publicize the fact <laughs> that uh, this birthday I will be completing my 80th year. Great. Not proud of that, but, well, I am proud of it. And we have a, a, a big, uh, they're going to roast me at the Beverly Hilton Hotel, a celebrity roast. <laughs> and I'm shaking in my boots already. Who's going to be there? Well, Larry King and Norm Crosby and Rich Little and some surprises I don't know about yet. They're, yeah. not, they're not telling me. Yeah, great. <laughs> Wonderful. We should probably start the interview now, don't you think? Yes. Okay. So, Pat, first of all, I just have to say it's super cool to just be sitting here with you and even get to talk to you backstage a little bit and have really seen your love for people and your heart for God. And I, I think that's, especially being here in L.A., that's something rare and something impressive. Sadly, sadly true, yeah. But it's also encouraging, because there are a lot of Christians, right, that are wanting to go into Hollywood and... Yeah, I've had so many names I won't mention, say, you know, Pat, I believe everything you believe. I don't dare say it. They're yeah. intimidated by the ultra-liberal sectarian um, attitudes that, that are pervasive in the entertainment industry. People ask, why is the entertainment industry so liberal? I think it's because they don't want any limits. They don't want any boundaries. They don't want anybody saying you can't do this or that because they can make money doing things and producing films and entertainment that are salacious, you know, sort of stretch the envelope as they call it, actually pop it wide open. And, uh, and so they don't want any uh, reservations on what they do. Yeah. And uh, I, I somehow have managed to exist and flourish right in the middle of all this trying to do like your granddad said, and that is think positively. Yeah, great. I've tried to do that all my life. But of course, you're a very principled person, right? I mean, like, uh, throughout your career, you had lots of opportunities that you turned down. I read on your, believe it or not, your Wikipedia page. Yeah, that... don't believe everything you... <laughs> well, did you turn down a role with Marilyn Monroe? I did. <laughs> I did, and I would like to have made a movie with Marilyn, but it was an immoral story. Yeah. It was early in my career. We were both under contract at 20th. And the head of the studio thought it would be great for me to play this young guy who had an affair with a still beautiful but slightly edging over the hill cabaret singer. And, and it ended with her going away, him being broken hearted, but he'd get over it. And I, I said to the head of the studio, I can't do this, Mr. Adler. Why? I said, Mr. Because, Adler? Yeah, Mr. Adler, buddy Adler. And uh, I said, because I've got millions of teenage fans and this story makes it look like it's okay. Nobody's hurt yeah. in this illicit affair. I, I can't do it. I risk suspension. Uh, he was livid. But then the next thing I did was journey to the center of the earth, which not only was a huge film, it saved the studio. Yeah, great. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> When I, was, uh, when I was a teenager, I was really moved by the, the film The Cross and the Switchblade, which I yeah. told you this morning, which is one reason I was particularly touched with you today. And of course, you also, weren't you the uh, Ozzy Osbourne's next door neighbor? Yes, I was. <laughs> yes, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah he, uh, I had done an album 
of heavy metal classics with big band jazz arrangements. And I went on the American Music Award show, and Dick Clark said he got the biggest single front page top news item reaction of anything they ever did because I wore leathers, tattoos, <laughs> and, uh, and it was to promote this album of sure. good music. It was really good music. Yeah. Uh, and, and Alice Cooper and I gave the award for hard rock and heavy metal to He's Metallica. He's a Christian, isn't he? He's a Christian I guy. know, that's yes, unbelievable. Is. Feed and, My Frankenstein is... <laughs> yeah, and listen, he's a serious Christian. Well, yeah. Ozzy, I also yeah. did Crazy Train, one of his songs. Yeah. He moved in next door to me right after that yeah. for three years. And I, as I'd never met him, and I saw him shuffling to get in a limo out in front of our house one day, and I hadn't met him yet. And I heard myself say to Ozzy Osbourne something I never thought I'd say. Hi, neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, well, hello, Pat. Nice to meet you. Well, we'll, we'll have to get together, have some tea, okay? <laughs> and then on his show several times, his wife Sharon said, oh, don't you miss living next to her, because he'd moved away. Don't you miss living next to Pat Boone? And she said, oh, you're the best bleep bleep neighbor we ever had. <laughs> <laughs> and we got along great, you know? Yeah, I, mean, sure. I really liked it. Okay. <laughs> that is so cool. You never thought we'd be talking about Ozzy Osbourne. Here, I know, right? this is so cool. Okay. <laughs> So the real reason you really came, I think, here was to talk about purpose mm -hmm. and the purpose of your life and the purpose of our lives. And that's a little bit what you're singing about today, isn't it? It sure is. These, these songs, this Jesus is Lord and another I'll do with the, with the choir, Don and the orchestra, are songs that have, I've written all of them in this album. It's the first time I've ever done that. And I call it Legacy because it's likely my last album. And don't I'll, say that. Well, I, I don't, I say likely. likely I, I never yeah. know. My dad said there's one thing he'd <laughs> never promise, and that is he would never promise anything. <laughs> but, uh, so I, but I think it's likely my last, and it's all songs of, that have come out of my own worship, come sure. out of my own life. And my purpose all along the way, though, as you said, I wanted to be a school teacher, preacher, I thought. But God had a, another idea. He knew my fantasies. He knew that I loved to sing, and I didn't think it was possible to be a professional singer. Boy, was I wrong. <laughs> and, and yet, along the way, I've wanted to, since I was a kid at 17, asking him to use my life in some way that would suit his purpose and bless other people, thinking it would be as a teacher. But then he built me a platform from which I could share the Lord in many ways, in many venues, uh, to folks in some cases that uh, might not have heard of him otherwise. And I just always wanted to be like those early, di early disciples. Uh, there were many professions. I don't think there was a rock and roll singer among them at the time. But the, the spectators, the other people, not believers yet, took notice of them that they had been with Jesus. Yeah. And I just want people, when they think of me, to realize I have been with Jesus. And I'm pointing to him with every way I know how. Yeah. And yet I have fun as an entertainer. Yeah. And my entertainer friends respect me now. Yeah, yeah. And it, and it does show, Pat. I mean, uh, I, you know, we, we, I get the opportunity to meet some, some special people. And some of them are different than what you see on stage. And then others are so kind and warm. And you can tell the light of Christ is in them. And that's really mm -hmm. you. I think yeah. that's really a lot of us We've had that. some baptisms in our swimming pool. <laughs> <laughs> we've had we've had over 300 baptisms in our swimming pool. Wow! Yeah. So you really you're really bad. yeah. Not wow. that I'm going out and stopping people on the street, sure. but during the uh, Jesus movement of the 70s, when young people were coming in great droves, and just like the day of Pentecost, they were saying, "Men and brethren, what must we do?" And Peter said, "Repent, be baptized, and wash away your sins, and you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit." And so kids were saying, hey, we're saved. Now, can we be baptized? And so many churches don't baptize anymore. Yeah. And so they were coming to our house, Jesus people off the streets. Can we use your pool? It was heated. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and so we've had, uh, of course, I've personally baptized a lot of folks, including some entertainers. And I won't, I won't mention their name for their privacy. But Ozzy Osbourne. Not Ozzy yet. <laughs> Some people thought I had baptized. The rumor was around I had baptized Bob Dylan when he came to the Lord. Yeah. But it wasn't true. I wish it were. Yeah. 
But well, if he wants to get baptized, send him my way. I'll be okay. happy to Okay, yeah. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. You know, there's millions of people watching around the world, uh, all, all over the world, really, who love you and, and are impressed by what you've accomplished in your life to really uh, walk in that purpose of shining the life of, of Christ in everything you do. If you had just one thing you would say to them, what's that, that one piece of advice you would give? I wrote a song. It's not in this particular album, so there may have to be yet at least another release called Everybody Dies. I wanted a song that was universal, that everybody could identify with. Let's face it, folks, we are all going to leave this life. We know it's coming. We buy fire insurance. We buy other types of insurance, theft insurance. What kind of insurance have you bought against the very fact of your life you're going to die? And the trouble is we can't afford the assurance, but Jesus has already paid for the insurance, and there is none other who ever has. So since we have to face the fact this life ends and another still begins, we would better get to know the one who has paid the price for that passage for us. That's my message. That's it's simple. Ten, Matthew 10, 32. Great. Thank you, Pat. You, you've really touched us in a deep way. And you know, I've, I've asked that question to literally hundreds of guests, and mm. I've never had a guest respond with the gospel. That mm, really is really, crazy. really is that right. It really is. That's, Matthew that's, ten thirty two. When I was, as I say, I was just thirteen, and I was reading the Bible for myself. I was expected to be baptized at twelve, but I was putting it off. I wanted to understand why. When I came to Jesus' words, Matthew ten thirty two, if anyone will confess me before men. I will confess him before my Father in heaven. If he denies me, I will have to deny him before my Father. I realized at 13, that's simple, you know. Yeah. Anybody can understand. If I will confess him and receive him, he's going to receive me before his Father. And that's all that matters in this life. Yeah. Everything else is just temporary. Yeah, that's right. Well, thank you for that reminder, Pat. And thank you for the reminder and the call to discipleship as well, just to be that shining light. And thank you with all of the things, all the opportunities that you've had in your life. You've stayed a faithful believer in Jesus and you've well, put him first. My wife will remind me gently I'm not perfect. Yeah. But, sure. but she doesn't have to remind me. I know it. Yeah. Well, we didn't say perfect. <laughs> no. But we said no. That, yeah. And I there just, was only one of those. Yeah, that's right. Thank you, Pat, for everything you're doing and everything you keep doing and for your music. And we, we just want to bless you and let you know how much we love you. And we're so thankful that you took the time to come to our church. We're humbled and honored. I'm loving so. it. Listen, you're, you're experiencing a great heritage. You're part of a great heritage. And I want to just send my love to your granddad. He and I have been friends for 40 years. Yeah, yeah, we will. We'll send, we'll send your love Please. to him. All right. Thank you, Mr. Pat Boone, for all you do. <laughs> God bless you. All the best. Thank you.